So obviously, some people know me just as the hat guy. Um, so for this presentation, I'm going to surprise oh, everybody. No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy um, thing. Yeah. So um, this is a. I've been doing this about 20 years. Um, my apparel career started at LL Bean in the U.S., a $2 billion company um, back in uh, Maine in the States. Uh, from there, uh, my friend Uli Dauzin, the founder of Jack Wolfskin, is here. I migrated from the, Ma uh, the coast of Maine to Germany to work as the head of innovation and materials for Jack Wolfskin. Um, and then after that, I see my friends from Puma here as well. Uh, after Wolfskin, I went to Puma, uh, ran the materials team there for about a year, and now I am jet-lagged because I came from New Zealand. Uh, so I work now for Kathmandu, uh, which is the largest outdoor brand in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, also running materials for them. So um, it's been a long journey, but it's been a fun one. And um, I'm really here just to present to you uh, some context around the mistakes that I've made. I know in the, um, the brochure or the, the subject of this topic is don't make mistakes, but it's actually learning from my mistakes. Um, and it, yeah, and it was, I, I think it was the translation of what we yes, hear. Yes, I changed it. <laughs> yeah, yes, good. So it's your stage. Oh, thank you very much. Inspire us, please, okay. as you always do, and let them, those, who knows, who knows you? Who knows me? Who knows oh, you? My, oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> you have a yeah. fan team over here. I'm just very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you work so for I, four brands, that happens. <laughs> I could have skipped that intro one. I'm sorry for that one. I should have asked that before. No, all good. All good. <laughs> so um, take, and then I need the clicker. So is this? this is yes. It? Oh. It's below your head. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. So... Um, yeah, essentially, I just want to go over, um, my goal here is not to have you, you know, just jot down everything I say, but it's more about nuggets of information. If you can take away just two or three pieces of information that helps you and your platform, uh, that's probably my goal here, is just to ensure that, you know, um, just a few things here and there can contribute to what you do at your brand. Um, I'm coming to you from a brand perspective, but I think a lot of these... Um, Concepts also apply to the mills, to the vendors, to um, contractors, designers, all of the above. So let's get started. Um, because I'm the last one, I did feel um, an obligation or a responsibility to inspire before leaving. Um, so I just want everybody to consider and know their personal why. Um, there's a corporate why, which is why you do things for your company, but there's also your personal why. What is your personal mission? Well, first of all, we're all here at Performance Days. Why are we here? Because we love materials, right? And, you know, I could have done other things in this industry. I'm actually educated in industrial design, not in fabric and, and uh, textile engineering. However, I love it so much that I find value in the work that I do. Uh, so what we want to do is ensure that we all understand the importance of materials to our company's success, but we also need our companies to understand the importance of what we do. Um, so I think it should be a fundamental pillar of any competitive brand. You have brands that just choose great materials, but you have competitive brands that want to do better. They want to create and find materials uh, that outclass other companies. And so this is kind of an overview of how I prefer to do that. Um, the right materials help separate your brand from others. Um, and by that, I mean unique stories, things that differentiate you from everyone else. Uh, it should be part of your innovation strategy. I'm personally not part of our innovation team, but I've had jobs within the innovation platforms at other brands. Um, it's always going to be part of the strategy. I participate in innovation on a daily basis. And then enabling a culture. So culture is one of the most important things. If you've ever been at a company that didn't have a great culture, it's not fun. So enabling a culture and enabling fun and enjoyment in what we do is, to me, the most inspirational thing about this position and about everybody here who's, we're all here for the same reason, right? Um, so we're more than just sourcing personnel. Let's get that through our heads. Um, we don't just find stuff. We actually are strategists. Our job is to ensure that the companies we work for understand that we're not just picking things um, which accommodate a line plan, but we're actually coming up with differentiation in those materials that that actually become part of your marketing story. They become part of what your brand is and represents. So um, essentially, there should always be a seat at the table, in my opinion, um, for materials when deciding a brand direction. When a line plan is being created, I think our input is valuable. OK, uh, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> 
Um, so for me, I just want to kind of separate this into two, two sections. Um, when I say it's all about balance, I'm talking about the external materials landscape. That's what's going on here. Everything we're doing right now is external, right? We're all coming together in one place, but we all come from different places. Um, and yet to ensure we have our internal landscape, uh, which is what we do for a service to our companies. And honestly, I think the biggest tip here is if you take care of your internal, it justifies the need for the external. So your company paying for you to be here is a result of the fact that you're taking care of your stuff back home so that they allow you to take trips like this and just continue finding new things. Uh, company goals versus team goals. So I'll just make this quick. Company goals are essentially function-based, right? They ensure that the company's needs are met. You just got to meet the needs of a brand that, that pays you. Um, but generally, that's also internally focused. Whereas team goals are inspiration-based. So when I manage a fabric team, my first goal, and anybody here who's worked with me, they know my first goal is to be the global leader. We want to win, right? That's what we're here for. We're competitive, but we're also collaborative. Um, brands working together, brands and mills working together. Um, so that's generally externally focused. And so how do we achieve success with both? To me, that's the, that's the crux, right? You can be really good at one, but not the other. So just a few tips here. Starting with company goals, I think the three main things to remember when you're in an organization is that you're being paid to analyze. Analyze materials, customer needs, best practices, all the trends that are out there. You're also being paid to consolidate, to find shortcuts, to find ways where materials can have multi-uses, where you can find you know, two or three products we can use the same material. Um, but also consolidating ideas and tasks and you know, anything corporate-based, and then deliverables, which is essentially your timelines, what you're being told to do season over season. So the thing is, I see internal stakeholders, your management, your leadership, they're the ones that are supporting you, right? So how do you keep them engaged? To me, some people might recognize this, but I've, I've deleted some of the data, so it's, it's not confidential anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> analyzing your material usage. To me, this is the most important tool because once you can justify the fact that you've done all the work, you've done all the analysis to make sure that you're optimizing your fabrics, um, you, you earn uh, support from your leaders, right? So creating metrics uh, for not just continuous improvement with your platform, but also company-wide, um, that earns trust. And it also feeds the other corporate goals of consolidation and deliverables. So sometimes you don't know how to consolidate unless you have the data to back it up. Sometimes you don't really understand how you, you deliver something at a certain timeline if you're not working on the midterm, long-term, and short-term goals. So all of this data that we have feeds into it. And I would also say, you know, at the companies I've worked for, we have software to uh, generate data. But if you don't have that kind of software, if you work at a smaller brand, um, just find a way to record your work. Um, because honestly, again, it'll support you in the end. It's worth doing the extra work and acquiring data like this in order to um, justify the, the, the materials that you're finding. OK, other tools. Um, uh, maintaining a library. Um, I think that's a major thing. You have two different types. You have an active library, which is the stuff you're doing right now. Um, things that are on the market, I like to keep those materials separate from the inspirational fabrics. So your general materials library, I don't care what you call it. You can call it anything you want, but you have an inspiration-based library of all the trends, all the cool stuff that you discover when you go to these vendor shows, and then an active library of what you're currently doing. And then also company-wide newsletters. I honestly think that's super valuable to the, to the internal, um, as well as making sure that you know, people know what you're up to. And then conducting training sessions. This is such a big deal. And I give credit to my friend over here who helped me make this document. Um, this, and again, I, bl I blurted out, you know, but essentially what I'm trying to say is when people are interested at your brand or at your company, um, offer to help, offer to teach them the things you know. Um, there's no secrets. Yes, you might feel that you need to protect your job. But at the end of the day, we find that the more sharing you do, actually, the more protection you have. People want to know what you're doing and what you're up to. Uh, so again, be all-inclusive with your organization. Uh, encouraging stakeholder participation. What's a stakeholder? It's your boss. It's the head of design. It's the head of product management. It's the head of product, uh, sorry, product development. Um, so essentially, you can use these people. Some of our salespeople and our marketing people in the industry, 
They're active users, they're skiers, they're, they're guys climbing mountains. They're the ones who also have knowledge of what the trends are. So ask about any cool new concepts from them. You know, you come here, you learn a lot, but there's still a lot we don't know. Um, the power users are also a wealth of information. Um, and consult those who have insights. Um, I've been lucky enough to work at brands that had customer insights departments. That's super helpful. And then also um, working with your sustainability team if you have one. If you don't have one or you're responsible for sustainability uh, within your organization, I think learning the regulatory uh, restrictions or enablement of different you know, EU or for in my case, the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian government uh, is setting rules for apparel. Just know that inside and out. And then there's a link to leadership. Um, some of my friends here are leaders, and I actually see company leaders as enablers. Um, they're the ones that, again, you need support from. Uh, so setting your company goals that I just mentioned in prior slides um, actually helps your team maintain a positive and safe materials culture. When I say safe culture, safe means that you're enabled to make mistakes. You're also enabled to explore, uh, have different pathways for different projects. Um, because leaders protect the future rather than the past. Um, you know, I think there's a, ob obviously a lot of heritage brands, a lot of companies that live on what they've done, and I think that's valuable and important, and they need to talk about it. But also looking to the future is what keeps us competitive. Uh, leaders never lose their nothing to lose spirit. I love that quote. I'm not making, I mean, I'm not making it up. Some of these come from various sources. Um, leaders enable your tools. Uh, to make it harder for complacency. So obviously, you don't want to sit on your laurels. We're always trying to be competitive. That's what the whole point of a uh, you know, uh, globally relevant materials team should be doing. And then, uh, again, I'm giving credit to the person who created this list, Jorge Barba. Uh, if you don't know him, look him up. He's got a lot of really great innovation quotes. Um, and yes, innovation has many enemies. So um, if you look up more of this guy, he'll tell you more about it. Okay, so that was corporate goals. That was our company goals. That's the internal part of what we do. Um, now let's talk about the fun stuff. I actually had up here, let's talk about the fun stuff, but I think it's probably uh, just more safe to say, let's consider what our team goals should be. Uh, keeping up with the trends, um, development trips, trade shows like this. Obviously, I don't have to tell anybody all this. You guys probably already know. Networking, put yourself out there. Don't be shy. Uh, creating brand relevant concepts with your strategic partners. Having like a top five, top 10 group of strategic partners is massive. Um, they are the ones that are willing to maybe break a few rules to try to help you out. Um, but those relationships come from networking, for, from creating trust between yourself and the, and the vendors that you work with. Um, so yeah, again, put yourself out there. And again, again, with team goals to me, it's mostly external. So start with a needs-based approach. And what I mean by that is themes. OK, so your brand is probably not going to you know, talk about themes from a marketing standpoint. Um, but I think as a fabric or materials group, um, you need to know your why. So here's a hypothetical. In autumn, winter 24, um, just, and again, these are not my themes. I, I have to keep that confidential. But as an example, you could say, OK, we want lightweight warmth. So focused on the best insulation for the weight. We want to stay dry, OK, basic, soft and cozy, and thermoregulation. That's all just hypothetical. But the idea here is essentially to tell people that you know, um, we have some goals for the season. And then how do you reach those goals? How do you meet those goals? Technology. So these technologies are based on various uh, metrics of newness. And uh, some folks I've worked with kind of know about this chart already, but um, I carry it with me. I think it's super valuable. Knowing what the technology you integrated is, is one of the most important things for your marketing teams, for the people you work with. Uh, because if you can say, hey, this is a first to market product, um, you generate excitement. But also there's best in category. So for example, if you say, if, if you believe Sympatex or Gore-Tex or whatever is best in class or best in your category, um, there's a place for that, and I think there's reasons for your brand to get behind some of those best-in-class technologies. There's also things that are just developed by your team to be better. So you take an odor control, 
you go from silver to botanical, but it's through your suggestions and your development with those suppliers. It's made better by your brand. Um, and I think there's also a very relevant place for those types of products. And then lastly, something new to us. So yeah, you've seen it out there. You say, oh, well, Mammut or Ortovox or somebody has this great technology. I think it would benefit us. Um, it's new to you, and it's worth talking about. So I won't go over all of these things, these tips, um, but it, it definitely works for constructions, um, and more than one product can fit these, these categories. Um, it also helps you determine, um, everybody talks about good, better, best. I think once you analyze your scale of newness or the type of newness that you're integrating, um, you can determine your good, better, best from that. And uh, yeah, first to market isn't always necessarily better. Um, sometimes you just need those, those good, better, best products. So um, how do we unlock the next big thing for our company? Uh, these are just my opinions. Again, if you guys think one of these is cool and the rest are irrelevant, that's cool with me. I just want you to take away some concepts. Um, I think balancing short and long-term concepts. I did mention earlier short, mid, and long-term, but for the sake of simplicity, I call it short and long-term concepts. Um, allowing yourself, through the support of your leadership, this goes back to the, the leadership um, you know, involvement, is to enable yourself to look at different ways of achieving something. Um, if there's something that is differentiated on the market and that you have the opportunity to be first to do it, let yourself explore that. If it doesn't work out, you can always go back to the fallback that you've also diverged from. Trusting the experts, of course. So this is where I pay homage to all the suppliers I see out here, all my friends um, you know, at the factory level who are the best in class. They're the, they deserve all the credit they can because a lot of times, I told you I'm not a textile engineer, but I trust the experts. And then um, I think one of my strong suits is just being comfortable with uncertainty, right? Um, you know, rethink what the now is and find what we never knew we needed. Um, that's a really hard thing to do, and I think many people are uncomfortable with that notion. But the more you practice, the more you do it, the more um, innovation you uncover, it becomes easier. And then understanding the big picture, does it contribute to your brand mission? So. I think the most essential tools uh, you can do internally from a, sorry, from a team perspective is to just track everything. Know your when, know your how. Um, it's great for prioritizing your short and long-term concepts. Um, it also, it's helpful to determine a hierarchy of raw materials. So just personally, within my hierarchy of what I think is good, better, best, I prioritize natural fibers whenever possible. Uh, I prioritize fabrics with a lower carbon footprint. Um, I strive for advanced recycling, and uh, without question, there is no doubt from now on, Kathmandu is going to be C0 or PFAS free. So other tools, just quickly, these are real simple uh, things you can do. Trips and trade shows, which I mentioned, but also I'm adding a date to this. I prefer to, to do trips and trade shows two to three months before we kick off our season. Um, you guys all have different timelines for that. I think it's you know, again, whatever works for your brand. I think the fabric requests is one and a half to two months before a seasonal kickoff. What that does is it allows the mills you work with and the partners you have to prepare, give them two, three, four weeks to actually bring the materials uh, to you based on the requests that you make. And field testing, I mean, one to two months before kickoff pretty much validates whether or not it's a viable product for your coming season. Um, and then I actually don't have a picture for this, but you know, some brands, actually my brand does not do this, but some brands will have an internal fabric fair. All right, and then the last thing to consider is high demand products, like what is your top seller? If you can change the game on something that makes the most money for your brand, um, and it's relevant and right for your company, uh, prioritize it. So then the last thing here is um, other considerations that I consider essential, like no compromise, is all of the things that we do as material developers, right? You know, what are the sustainability factors? Is there durability, test results? Um, I'm not gonna go over all of these things, but I think one of the more major ones also that people don't think about is storytelling. Um, is there a way that your, your brand can actually get behind the materials that you're so passionate about? All right. So, how do we frame it up for marketing, right? So. One thing that I'm always asked at Kathmandu is, oh, you have all these amazing technologies, but how do we categorize them? How do we talk about them? So if you remember the four squares I showed earlier, 
Uh, this is those four squares. Uh, it's just now we're putting it into product form. So um, again, in, in those four squares, I didn't mention them, but I had recycled membranes, active insulation, bio-based fleece, recycled down. These are not Kathmandu's stories. I just put in hypothetical, I put in like example technologies. Um, and then description of that technology and then explaining here, the most important thing is identifying for your company which products are actually gonna have those technologies. So you can create the capsules, you can create the lines that your company can get behind. And ideally, it's more than one product. I mean, you're always gonna have a hero product here and there, but I think also having multiple products um, with the same technology generates excitement and also gives marketing a chance to talk about multiple things. So, quantifying. So how do we say that what we did in our material development is worthwhile? What we did was, um, you know, essentially something that we can be enabled or allowed by leadership to continue doing. Uh, grow the infrastructure. So this is in partnership with marketing. Ensure that, um, you know, that the fabric information is available to anybody who asks. Um, look at, gener I mean, generated revenue. Like, you know, if you're two seasons out from a material you introduced, How's it performing? What's it doing on the market? If it's not doing well, is there something we can do in marketing to make it? Or is it just a failed, like maybe it's just not a fabric people are interested in. That's okay, you know? Um, and then look at uh, next generation materials if anyone's trading up. If someone, of course, we all wanna make durable products. It's not right to say that we're making disposability. But if there's a jacket that, you know, people are buying now because it's better than what was out there before, um, you know, check for the rates of trade up um, from our customers. And then consider uh, patentable, pa patentable opportunities, IP opportunities, protecting the future as much as the past. Again, I mentioned that before, um, and media coverage. So the next steps, you're gonna be overwhelmed by this slide, but don't be, because I'm not gonna talk about it all. Um, the external fabric landscape is always changing. You guys come here, there's a million new things you can uncover, right? Um, it's impossible to see it all, um, but that's why we do our follow-up. And we look at the, you know, the lectures that have been given, and we look at the mills that maybe we didn't have time to visit. That's a lot. Um, so again, we're not gonna go over this whole list, but the point is that we find these things. And I would say a successful materials team may have implemented something about one-third or even maybe a quarter of these technologies, then you're on the right track because what this means is that you're essentially keeping up and you're being relevant with other companies. Uh, and then lastly, uh, it's, not a, it's not a performance days presentation without talking about some technology. Um, and I think one thing we haven't touched on is the value of raw materials, um, dissecting, reverse engineering fabrics. Um, it really does come down to the, to the chips and the, and the materials that are inside the fibers and yarns themselves. Um, it's the building blocks. Uh, and also I consider chemical treatments and finishing to be part of the raw material process. Um, you could call it tier four, you can call it tier whatever, you know, but essentially I consider all these ingredients that go into the final fabric to be a raw material. Um, and for my personal um, challenge uh, is to be PFAS free. Some brands are already completely PFAS free um, and some brands are still working on it, but to me that's one of the bigger challenges I've had to deal with. Um, and then advanced recycling, which is essentially uh, a larger topic, but it is actually the topic of this entire show, beyond the bottle, right? So uh, what do we find in advanced recycling that is uh, not just the traditional way of, of generating new materials? Carbon capture, garment recycled, uh, insulations with garment recycling, car tire nylons, all of this stuff to me, um, if I can get that in a fabric, I prefer that over anything that comes from standard, you know, traditional sources. So, and last thing, just a tip. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Okay, uh, just easy tip, study on mass balance. If you don't know what mass balance is, look it up, Google it. Um, I think it's, it's really the future of advanced recycling. Um, and then lastly, uh, pushing for carbon scores, meaning talk to your mills. I know that um, the previous performance days themes were about uh, carbon scores and carbon ratings. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done. We need to standardize how carbon scores are generated. Uh, but in my opinion, um, you know, as long as the, the brands keep pushing, the industry keeps pushing, we can actually generate the right things for us. 
and then there's already some icons that exist. So last, I got five minutes left, and so I'm going to give you my, I don't know, top 10 takeaways. They're all just quotes. Encourage proactive, not reactive team members. Maintain clarity of roles, but a culture of sharing. Find the most unique selling points possible for your fabrics, because it brings everybody else internally uh, along with you. Have a robust set of tracking tools. Stay updated on trend while also setting trends. We didn't talk about how we can set trends ourselves through materials. Um, never get too attached to any one concept, but never forget it either. <laughs> I get attached to a lot of things, but I know not everything can be implemented. Uh, determine reasonable metrics for leadership support. And lastly, stay the disruptor, not the disrupted. And that, my friends, is the end of my presentation. I think we can take some, some questions. No. Are you on? Yes, I'm on. Oh, oh. on? All right. I love what you're doing. I love your energy. I love the oh. summary. I love everything. So. I want everybody to go home <laughs> excited, right? Yeah, you did it. Ah, good. Good, good. <laughs> I would not disrupt this one with the summary of the show. <laughs> should stay quiet. So um, please ask questions on the all-inclusive buddy thing is what I love most. Mm. Mm. So if there are, maybe there are some answers, there are some questions, because what you are delivering on leadership and on baseline work, what you need to consider to make leadership happen. So it's both. I admire. So uh, where are the questions? This is Pia with the open microphone. So whatever you want to share, please do it now. This is the moment. We have only around 10 minutes to go for the show, because my wrap up in the program is supposed to be like eight minutes or something. Ah, okay. So it's a very quick one, and I would love to share more time here with, the, with you all for that one. Any impulses, anything to say, anything to comment? Please. It's always a respect question towards oh, the presenter. I don't, I don't have all the answers. I may actually point to some others for answers. <laughs> yeah, you could do. You could <laughs> announce, yeah. announce comments. Yeah. <laughs> you are so stable base for every. <laughs> Please say your name and what you're Hi. doing. Um. So that you know the game. Hi, I'm David. I'm a freelance designer, and <laughs> I've probably asked way too many questions on this entire uh, fair, but it's been great. Um, I just wanted to ask, what are some things in your career that are really pivotal moments, if you can speak about them, that led you to basically come to all these conclusions, which was so helpful to, to watch? Uh, yeah, to be honest, failure. Um, when I was uh, head of innovation um, back at L.L. Bean in my my first, basically, apparel career, uh, I failed constantly. And you learn quickly, I think, by doing things the incorrect way uh, than often by doing things the right way. So it takes years to get, and I'm not even saying I'm at the point of completion, um, but for me, it's just learning from those mistakes. Um, not only having the, you also learn from others around you, whether you have a good leader or a leader that maybe pushes you in directions you're not comfortable with. Um, but yeah, for me, I think, at least just my personal opinion, uh, the failures are what I've learned from the most rather than the successes. Um, and when, when you achieve a success, you just jot it down. You make sure, I mean, I'm not even the most organized person in the world. People who work with me know that. Um, but I, I always take notes and I always ensure that I, I record things that are beneficial to my career. It's always then the question, where to find them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can, you, can you go back to the findings so then we have some bits and pieces in there and maybe something comes I can share you. the PDF. <laughs> can, can you go back to the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Because then it's one of the answers towards... Oh, it's all just like... Which, uh, which slide are you referring to? I thought to? you were, um, like, the last one was the summary. Oh, the summary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Start from the very beginning. It's always... <laughs> yeah, it just takes forever here. Um, okay, last one. There we go. So, and, and adding to that question, was there one you remember which, like, hit you most? Uh, yeah, I think it's never get attached to any one concept, you know, learn to let things go. As much as you think something's going to be amazing, it's very possible that the market won't agree with you. Um, and you just have to learn to accept that. And um, you can always keep the prototype if you made one. You can have a good time with the development of the concept. But if it doesn't make it to market, um, you know, in my opinion, that's just part of the, the business that we're in. 
and such a small thin line between patience and passion mm -hmm. to really make sure you judge on the right balance? Yeah. Just to add. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Any questions, any remarks? Just on time. Just on time, yeah, but hey. it's so it's so it's so nice to we'll be with you on stage. So uh, stay the disruptor, not the disrupted could be one of the most important key takeaways for everybody of us, for the show, for itself. Is there any call to action you want to share? Because this is like the audience we need to make change possible and some words on the show in a minute, but is there something you want to yeah. send for the change makers? I think stay inspired. Uh, you know, surprise your brand. If your brand is not asking for you to take those extra steps, but you do it anyway, shock them. Come back and say, well, I know you weren't asking for this thing, but we've uncovered some really, really great things. And the only way to do that is to be inspired and to just continue. I mean, like I said, I could have done other things in the business, but I stuck with materials because to me, it's the most fun. And, you know, I'm inspired by it. And I hope you all are too, because that's why we're here. That's why we're here, exactly. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Take Thank care. You. So Thank for, you. Um, as far as I know, all the presentations are available anyhow for all of you. Okay. I think, I'm not sure, are you sending them out or is that the Performance Days team? I think it's the Performance Days team, it is. right? Yeah. So this is all open source for the presentations you saw, but also for the video which is taken here, it will be available in time scale of two weeks. Perfect. You Online. Can find for me on show. LinkedIn too, you know? Yes. All good. Thank you so much. All right. Time for the hat. Time for the hat. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, just give, give it to me. Oh, both. Thank you. See you later. <laughs>